Hi, it's Wendy Hernandez with Command the Courtroom. In today's video, I want to talk with you a little bit about rules in the family law courtroom. Let me just say this. Rules in the family law courtroom are not meant to be broken. If you break the rules of your judge that your judge has set, or you, you don't follow the rules of family law procedure or civil procedure, or you don't follow the minute entry orders that the court has set, you could suffer some really serious consequences in your case that could affect you and or your family for the rest of your lives. And the reason that this issue or this topic is at the top of my mind is because I've just had a trial within the last couple of days where an attorney did not follow the rules in, in, the, in the case. And as a result, um, I think her client's gonna suffer some devastated consequences over some major issues. So let me just tell you what happened in that case. We were litigating a really hotly contested divorce case. It had been going on for about a year. Um, some of the issues in dispute were child custody, parenting time, child support, spousal maintenance was huge, the division of property, and then another big issue was attorney's fees. In other words, um, was my client gonna have to pay for the other party's attorney's fees? So I represented the husband, um, and wife was making not only the claim for attorney's fees against him, but she was also making a request that he pay spousal maintenance um, in the amount of several thousand dollars over nearly a decade. So this was a, a really big bone of contention and, and one of the main reasons that the parties went to trial. Um, right before the trial, the parties were able to work out almost all of the custody and parenting time issues. There was just like one or two issues that were minor that the judge had to take a look at. So in the course of the trial, it came up that mother had and or her attorney had not complied with the Arizona rules of family law procedure. And what they failed to do in a timely fashion was to provide what's called an affidavit of financial information. And that's a form in Arizona that people have to fill out whenever they're making any kind of financial claim, whether it's for child support or for spousal maintenance or for attorney's fees. While well, mother and or her attorney failed to fill this form out in a timely manner, they didn't get it filed uh, by the date that the rules of civil or of family law procedures said that they had to file it. And as a result, the judge wasn't really happy. And the judge asked me at the very end of the trial whether I wanted to make a motion um, because they had failed to follow, follow the rules. So the motion that I made was that the court dismiss the spousal maintenance claim against my client and the attorney's fees claim against my client. Um, the court then went on to have a little bit of a conversation with the other attorney about was there any reason, any legal reason why the court or the judge should not follow um, the rule which says that they shall, they should have or they shall have filed this affidavit by, the certain, by a certain date. And the other attorney could not come up with a legal reason or a case or another rule of law why the court should not dismiss the spousal maintenance and or attorney's fees claim. So um, the judge took the, the matter under advisement. We haven't heard the judge's decision yet, but I have every reason to anticipate that the judge will be getting rid of that spousal maintenance claim and that attorney's fees claim. And the reason is, is because something similar happened in this same case um, at the end of last year, we went to court for a temporary orders hearing. And at the temporary orders hearing, mother was requesting an award of spousal maintenance. And the same attorney and the same judge were on the case. And I raised the issue that this affidavit of financial information had not been filed um, in a timely fashion. And the judge dismissed the spousal maintenance claim on a temporary basis. So the point is, is you really need to follow the rules and some judges blow off things like late disclosure or if somebody doesn't file something on time but you don't want to take the chance that the judge might not take or might not blow it off because this judge in this particular case obviously takes deadlines very seriously and for someone who didn't follow the rules it's very likely now that this woman is going to be deprived of spousal maintenance that she may have gotten otherwise just because of a failure to not do what you're supposed to do. So in your case, wherever you are, there's a few sets of rules at the very least that you need to look at. Um, in a lot of states, they follow the rules of civil procedure and in a family law case would be considered a civil case. 
in Arizona, we used to follow the rules of civil, the Arizona rules of civil procedure and family law cases, but at some point, um, uh, there were rules made especially for family law cases. So now we have the Arizona rules of family law procedure. Instead of following the rules of civil procedure, we follow the rules of family law procedure. So number one in your case, check whether, whether or not there are special rules of procedure for family law. And if not, find out whether or not you need to be following the rules of civil procedure and read them, digest them, make sure you follow the timelines set forth in them. Um, and so that's the good, a good place to start. After um, doing some research into the rules of either family law procedure or civil procedure, you wanna next move to local rules. So local rules are rules that are set out and they could be in your city or in your county and, and they pertain to the specific court in your city or your county. And Arizona does have local rules um, and be sure and review those local rules because although they, they may not be addressed at all in the rules of civil procedure or family law procedure. Another level that you need to look at in checking out rules are the rules of the court. And rules of the court can be issued in a couple of different ways. The first way is in a minute entry. Anytime a judge has a hearing and makes decisions or enters order, he or she will probably be sending you minutes of that hearing which set forth the rulings and tell everybody what they're supposed to be doing. So these are rules, these are orders, and you need to follow them. Um, in Arizona, when a court sets a trial date, not only does the court set the trial date, but the court will set forth rules or orders which say five days before trial you need to submit a pretrial statement five days before trial you need to submit your uh, exhibits to the clerk of the court for marking you need to exchange all of this stuff with the other side so there's a lot of rules that can be set forth in those minute entries and i have been in uh, cases where i've seen the other side penalized because they didn't follow those pretrial rules that were set forth in the minute entries so another level of rules that you should be looking at are the rules of your specific judge. Um, and sometimes they go into court and judges have the rules um, taped to the, the table, the ta litigants tables, and the rules say, you know, ask to approach the witness when you're in the courtroom or don't speak unless the court asks you to speak. And you know, there, there could be any number of rules that a particular judge has. So make it your business to find out what the judge's rules are. Do your research, get on forums. Um, in Arizona, we do have a website uh, with a list of judges and some judges choose to put in their biographical information the specific rules that they have for their courtroom. If you don't follow that judge's rules, then the judge could um, not find in your favor because you're not doing what he or she is asking you to do. So again, wherever you are, look at rules at the very least at four levels. Look at them at the state level. Are there state rules of procedure that you need to follow? And if there are, are they the civil rules of procedure or the family uh, law rules of procedure, or family court rules of procedure? At the next level, look at the local rules and see whether those local rules might impact the way that you handle your case. At the next level, look at the minute entries and the orders that the court has made in your case and be sure to do what the judge has told you to do. And then at the very uh, closest level to the judge, look at what it is that the judge wants done in his or her courtroom in his or her cases. Do your very best to follow the rules. And you know, sometimes people do messed up um, not everybody's perfect, mistakes are made, and, and, and sometimes you can fix them, sometimes you can remedy them, but you have to do your very best to follow the rules because with a big issue like spousal maintenance, if somebody's denied the right to spousal maintenance, that really affects them for years to come, if, especially if they're entitled to an award of spousal maintenance. If somebody has spent tens of thousands of dollars on attorney's fees and they may have gotten attorney's, and, uh, attorney's fees and costs, but they were denied that just because on a technicality, that's not cool. So I don't know what the judge is gonna decide, but based on her prior action in the same case, I think I have a pretty good idea. And also based on what, how she was addressing it in the hearing this past week and at the question she was asking of the other attorney. So please follow the rules. Rules are not optional in family court. They are not meant to be broken. And with things as important as your children and your family at stake, it really is worth it to follow the rules. 
So again, this is Wendy Hernandez with Command the Courtroom. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. If you have questions, drop me a question and I may, I may answer the question in a future video. Remember to like Command the Courtroom on Facebook. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do that, you're going to get notified every week when the video comes out. But until next week, remember to keep moving forward in your case. I'm on your side when it matters most. And let's go command the courtroom.